West Ham United are on the rise. After winning last season's Europa Conference League title, the club has had a strong transfer window, completing the signing of James Ward-Prowse from relegated Southampton, Ajax's Edson Alvarez, and former Arsenal talent Konstantinos Mavropanos. With a massive 3-1 victory against Chelsea and Lucas Paqueta rumored to stay at the club this transfer window, it's been a good start to the 23-24 season for West Ham. I'd still say that the leading storyline this summer has been the departure of Declan Rice to Arsenal, but there were still a lot of positives from the deal over 100 million to be used for future signings and investments and also rice gave everything for his boyhood club in helping them lift a european trophy things can obviously change quickly in the transfer window but it looks like mohamed kudus is leaning towards a move to west ham over other premier league clubs the ajax talent and ghanaian international is a versatile player that can feature as a center midfielder winger or even center forward the only concern is injury and fitness issues that have limited his appearances in previous seasons still he could be a massive help to west ham's attack and perhaps his former Ajax teammate Alvarez can help bring the Kudus deal over the line. If I had to guess the finalized deal for Kudus will be somewhere between the 35 to 40 million range. We do manage to bring him in at the lower end of that 35 million as he's got an exciting prospect status. And I talked about his versatility. We're going to try him at right wing and that should help his overall growth this season. Name a better duo than Jesse Lingard and David Moyes. The former Manchester United talent spent half of the 2021 season on loan at West Ham and what a half a season it was. Nine goals and five assists from 16 appearances. There are some rumors that he might join West Ham again now that he's a free agent, but I've decided to go a different direction for this save. Personally, I think Pablo Fornals isn't acting in the right role at left mid. Only a few years ago, he had 87 potential playing as a central player in a Villarreal squad. So we're going to try that position change to center mid as Fornals acts as an important squad rotation player. A solid youth academy scout to begin the save, Tommy Mitchell, a four-star, four-star scout from England, and we have a homegrown talent to review. Owen Hunter is an English left winger, 66 rated with 72 to 94 potential. And I think he'll stay at that left winger role, just working on some of his pace and shooting attributes. I'm going to make it a goal to improve upon West Ham's 14th place finish in the Premier League last season. We'll kick off our league fixtures against Newcastle, who had an impressive Premier League campaign of their own. This is an improved West Ham squad, but there are still some question marks in our starting 11. As of right now, Conference League final go scorer Jared Bowen will be our starting striker. I just couldn't leave him out of the starting 11, but I wouldn't be shocked if West Ham turned towards the transfer market once more and signed Sevilla striker Yusuf and Nasiri. Our decision to start Bowen seems to have paid off as he had an 87th minute equalizer to give us a single point against Newcastle. Definitely some big expectations for the year as we try to qualify for the Europa League based off our domestic performances. Speaking of which, we've got a Europa League group consisting of Ajax, Bodo Glimt, and Zurich. Lots of former Ajax players in our squad, but they've still got Brian Broby, who's up to a 77 rating. Over at Bodo Glimt, Albert Gronbeck is a 72 rated center attacking mid. Basir Omaradzic used to be one of the top potential players at Zurich, but he's just recently completed a transfer move to Montpellier. It wasn't a spectacular start to our Premier League season, a win, two draws, and a loss to start the year, but we've got our first Europa League group stage fixture against Ajax. Can Edson Alvarez and Mohamed Kudus be the difference makers in a match that will likely be between the two favorites in our group? Doing a West Ham career mode has been on my bucket list for a while now, particularly for these next-gen bubbles that feature when you play in the London Stadium. But getting into the match highlights, it's some good passing play from Bowen to start the match. He's going to find War Prowse on the through ball. Good save though from Ruli to deny the effort. Keeping up with the momentum, a couple of Ajax players linking up with Kudus getting the first goal of this match. 39 minutes in, it didn't take him long to adjust the life here at West Ham, both in the Premier League and also in European competitions. He's got Champions League experience. I bet he can do the job in the Europa League if West Ham do indeed complete this signing. But a change in the 55th minute, we decided to give Danny Ings a go at the striker spot for Bowen. And right away, he'll make an impact. Playing this one through to Kudus, looking for the ball in the center. Eventually, it does fall over to Ings. Really a typical goal for him, lurking inside the box, waiting for his chance and just side footing it into the back of the net. A great team display as we kick off our Europa League campaign with three points. Hopefully our good form in the Europa League will carry over to the Premier League as we check on results in January 2023. Very happy with our team performance, seventh place in the league standings. And we have put in a great shift for the Europa League, going unbeaten, accumulating 18 points from six matches played. Starting 11 
otherwise there are a few standouts to talk about specifically the growth that kudus has achieved he's gone up plus six in his rating and look at this goal and assist output 11 goals six assists leads the club in both categories but we're going to have some tough tests in the europa league ahead a tough draw as we face manchester united in the round of 16. Harry Maguire has actually had a couple of West Ham links in this transfer window. You might remember a decade ago, Moyes was the first manager appointed after Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United. He'll surely be looking to get a win against them, but it was a 2-2 draw in the first leg as we complete the month of January and even going through February into March. We're in very good form. We just need to get a winning result at home in the second leg of this Europa League draw. More former Ajax players to talk about as both Lissandro Martinez and Antony feature in the starting 11 for Manchester United. I think West Ham's run in the Conference League has given them a lot of confidence for the 23-24 season. They're inevitably going to face some tough opponents in the Europa League this time around, and Manchester United could very well be one of them depending on how results go. But unlucky for us not to get the first goal in this one with... I think it was the free kick ever going off of the crossbar. Marcus Rashford in the 17th minute will open up the scoring for Manchester United. Just drifting into the box and getting the open chance. Kudos here in the 24th minute finds Bowen, but a good save on David De Gea's near post. As now it's Paqueta trying to play this ball across. Ultimately, it's a mistake by John Mario, and Kudus pounces on the chance. The misplaced pass from the Manchester United defender will find the back of the nets, but unfortunately, we're not able to go into the halftime break with a level scoreline. Angel Correa, a new signing for Manchester United, will get them a second goal in the 44th minute. One of the worst times to concede, but we'll just have to deal with it as we get into the next 45 minutes. Time is starting to run out on this one. It's Bowen down the right wing as we have just three minutes of added extra time. Kudus bursting into the box. He's going to go solo this time around, getting that on his preferred left foot. And he has really stepped up for this West Ham squad throughout this season. He loves scoring in the Europa League and maybe this will be a sign of things to come. Getting into now the 110th minute, it's Taremi. A lot of new striker signings for Manchester United as that was a crucial goal for them to score. We're going to get one final chance here with Bowen taking the corner kick. Interesting that Ward Prowse is not the selected player by the computer AI, but fans are waiting in anticipation to see what happens on the ensuing set piece. Bowen lining things up, getting this inside the box, but it's cleared away initially. Alvarez unable to complete the pass to Fornals. Manchester United pick up the ball, and that is how things will end in this thrilling Europa League round of 16 contest. Which segues perfectly to the sponsor of this video, Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that is disrupting the men's grooming market. Manscaped is trusted by more than 9 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations, and premium boxers. And their performance package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. I was really impressed with the packaging and the fact that every tool in this box has a job. First to highlight is the Lawnmower 4.0. This fourth generation electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents and has a 4000K LED spotlight for when you need a more precise shave. And because this trimmer is waterproof, you can finally trim in the shower without having to worry about a mess on your bathroom floor. This Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer also features a smart cordless charging system and these little LED lights on the front to show you how much juice you have, up to 90 minutes of use on a full charge. Just tap the button on the front three times and it enables the travel lock feature. If you're trying to take your grooming game to the next level, the next item in the Performance Package 4.0 is the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. The Weed Whacker 2.0 uses a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with an improved steel blade system and upgraded cutting performance from their first generation Weed Whacker to better whack your weeds. The Weed Whacker is cordless rechargeable and has a battery with up to 45 minutes of runtime. It's also created with a proprietary technology which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nozzles. Two items I never knew I needed until now are also included in the Performance Package 4.0 in the form of the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. All you need to do is simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower and you can also use the Crop Reviver as a convenient spritz 
with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0, the Manscaped anti-chafing boxers and the shed travel bag. So bring your comfort and boxers to another level. Go to manscaped.com today and you can get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use code Flickify at checkout. Once again, that's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code Flickify at manscaped.com. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Looking at results, our next Premier League fixture will actually be up against Manchester United. We've failed this continental success objective of reaching the final of the Europa League, so we definitely need to try to focus on the domestic success objective of finishing in a Europa League spot. Taking a look at the league table, we might even be able to push up to Champions League qualification, especially if results will continue like this. Danny Ng scoring the winning goal in the 80th minute. And as we push forward to May, we've actually got a cup final up against Manchester City. This is an FA Cup final. Surprisingly, City haven't made all that many signings, it's interesting that the one that they have made at left back is Christian Gunter, who is likely to stay as a Freiburg player for his entire career. The buildup in this game was all about the Manchester City squad, but one thing to keep in mind is that at least for this save, we've continued with the storyline that Lucas Paqueta has stayed here at West Ham despite notable interest from Manchester City. Will Paqueta prove to be the difference maker? Only time will tell. Some good passing play in the midfield from City, but a chance denied by Areola as now we get on the counter attack. It's Emerson, our left back, who plays the ball into the box. First effort is missed, but the second one somehow fell in the path of Kudus and once again he just finds a way to get to these loose balls and sort of guides them into the back net. Even the instant replay, his lunge missed the first effort but the pass from the Man City defender went straight to Kudus. We'll take that for a goal. We're still in the first half as City now play through Ilkay Gundogan, of course, transferring to Barcelona in real life, but still a City in this save as he finds the equalizer. At the halftime break, zero expected goals shows what the game thinks of Kudus's effort. But every single goal counts as we push forward into the 50th minute. Once again, it's Emerson who's playing a big role in this one. The shot denied initially, but it falls to Ben Rama. The first time effort, no way that Ederson can save that on his near post as we have a two to one lead in the 52nd minute. But kind of the story of this match is that City found a way to make a swift response. Of course, Erling Haaland is always going to get on the score sheet at some point in time. Took him until the second half to do it in this one. But now Bowen playing through Ben Rama. He scored the second goal for us. And this time his effort is saving Kudus. Once again, finds the rebound effort with no city defenders in sight. That'll once again give us the lead 3-2. to two. And further continuing the narrative that Kudus has been our best signing of the summer. Not long left now as City look to find another response as Julian Alvarez find Jack Grealish. His effort also going into the back of the net. Not the best display from Ariola as he's given up two long shots. But the match ends at 3-3, three three, meaning that we're going to head into penalty kicks. Things could go either way as Kevin De Bruyne starts off the scoring for City, but... We decided to make a late substitution, bringing on Ings, and we were very tactical with, with which players were on the pitch for us as we finally take the lead. And as Silva has his effort denied, it's a chance for Michael Antonio to be the winner and score the winning penalty. Mr. Reliable for West Ham over the years will secure us trophies in back-to-back -back seasons. And defeating Manchester City in the FA Cup has disrupted the trend of English football in recent years. As our season comes to a close, we do manage a fourth place finish in the Premier League. Lots of changes from the halfway mark as Liverpool end up as league winners. Chelsea, Spurs, and us round out the top four spots. Definitely some surprises mixed in here mid-table. Unfortunately, I forgot to swap the relegated teams like Leicester City to the championship, so they actually saw a 10th place finish. Southampton and Leeds, on the other hand, do go bottom of the table and earn relegation along with Bournemouth to the championship. As for the championship, Middlesbrough and Norwich securing those automatic promotion spots to the Premier League. Burnley were championship playoff winners. Of course, most recently, we saw a victory against Manchester City in the FA Cup. Wimbledon take down Spurs in the Carabao Cup final. What an upset that was Eintracht Frankfurt winning the UEFA Super Cup against Real Madrid to start the season. RB Leipzig also getting a win against Madrid in the Champions League final. Inter were victorious against Fenerbahce in the Europa League and Freiburg pick up a Conference League title against AZ. The top goal scorer for the club was fairly predictable from the halfway point. Kudus with 27 from 55. It ranked him 
in the top seven for Premier League goals with Zapata, new signing for Spurs, leading the way. Kudus also had the most assists just clear of Ben Rama with 17 from 55. Even higher for this category as both of them finished top five, Hyungmin Son and Taremi, equal with 12 assists across the league campaign. And a respectable outing from Ariola in the clean sheets category, top five with eight from 37. We do have three players whose contracts are coming to an end, each of them having pretty storied Premier League careers. Angelo Ogbana, Aaron Cresswell, and Lucas Fabianski. They're actually all leaving on a free transfer as their footballing career continues. But we've got a status update on Owen Hunter. He spent the season in our youth academy and saw a plus four in his rating up to a 70 overall. That early exit from the Europa League really cost us our manager rating as we're all the way down to a 58 overall. We keep on moving up the ranks with West Ham United, ready to get underway with season two and some changes are ahead. I figure because of Kudus' great goal output, both in terms of the goal and assist category, let's stick him in at one of his potential positions center forward. That frees up the right wing spot for Jared Bowen, and hopefully he could see more goal output this year. But with a 58 manager rating, we need to focus on some board objectives. Domestic success, we need to finish in a Champions League spot in the Premier League, win the FA Cup, and reach the semi-final of the Champions League. A transfer budget of roughly 142 million. With a big transfer budget and Champions League football, that means we're going to see some signings this summer. I've seen enough of West Ham's transfer history to get an idea of the type of players they sign, and I think Kieran Tierney fits the criteria that I'm looking for. Despite the arrival of Zinchenko at Manchester City, Tierney has still seen solid appearances for Arsenal. Typically, on a year-to-year -year basis, he makes roughly 20 appearances. I do think he's important to the club, but he certainly deserves a starting left-back spot, and if he can't get that at Arsenal with Zinchenko featuring ahead of him, then he has to figure out another option. It's a significant upgrade for us as Tierney arrives on just a 25 million transfer fee. It's actually less than his valuation of 28 million. You might have seen it in the Tierney transfer photo, but Jane Sancho will be our next transfer target. Now that he has two years under his belt at Manchester United, I think a move away wouldn't be too illogical to maybe get back to the sort of output he was putting up at Borussia Dortmund. There are actually some low links between him and Borussia Dortmund. I would love to see that return, but a move to another Premier League side is not bad at all, especially one like us at West Ham who offers Champions League experience. I just don't know if the system at Manchester United is the best for him and his future. We're really splashing the cash here as Sancho arrives on a 55 million transfer fee, 10 million more than what he's valued at, but his overall and potential could certainly go higher. It's another Arsenal talent up next with Fuller and Balogun. The new US men's national team striker is at a 79 overall at this point in time. He's probably the third choice striker option at Arsenal, which is a shame considering he just set a record for most goals for an American in Liga. There are now some links to him and Monaco, which would also be a solid move. What I'm getting at is that he deserves to be at least a second choice striker for a top team or a first choice striker somewhere. 25 million is the finalized transfer fee to bring Balogun to West Ham. His valuation has increased sharply in recent years, all the way up to 34 million. Career mode's always amusing with some of their transfer offers. Declan Rice plus 4.5 million is a swap deal offer for Lucas Paqueta. Not a swap deal that I'm willing to accept for realism, but it's nice to see how Rice has progressed. Couple of departures though, as Ben Rama, who was sneakily one of the top goal output players from the club, heads to RB Leipzig for 20 million and then Tilo Kerrer will be leaving to Spurs for a 15 million deal. We've got a new competition to start this season. This is the FA Community Shield up against Liverpool, a team that climbed through the ranks of the Premier League to take the top spot last year. But once again, the squad continues to get stronger and stronger year on year. And I think two big arrivals with Tierney and Sancho will make the difference for us as we try to secure another trophy just months after our FA Cup victory. The player spotlight for this match is on Kieran Tierney, our new left back signing at West Ham and a left back that I think could fit into a number of different Premier League sides. It's our other summer signing Sancho that nearly provides the assist for Tierney as his header is saved from Ali's son. But just before the halftime break, it's Luis Diaz holding off the defender and a fantastic save just feet away from Ariola. But Liverpool continuing their pressure. Luis Diaz finds Jones, and this was an effort that I think Ariola could have saved uh, if the first one had not been saved. But it's Liverpool that strike first. Jones 
giving them the advantage and celebrating with Jorgen Klopp. This instant replay will give you a better idea. Looks like a relatively routine stop. But that goal ended up being the difference as Liverpool had all the momentum. Now they're going to play through Gakpo and he will get a second in the 85th minute. Disappointing for us not to see any goal output in this FA Community Shield, but also to concede a couple. We need to be doing better, especially as we take the step up to the Champions League. But fair play to Liverpool. They're probably going to be one of the Premier League favorites, and they certainly deserve the win in this one. That defeat tells me we need to make more transfers happen in this summer window. We've got even more difficult fixtures up ahead, and I think the logical choice is to make an upgrade at the goalkeeper position. Already four seasons under his belt at Nantes, it's looking like within the next few years, he is going to make a move away. He's got an impressive amount of appearances despite being at such a young age for a goalkeeper. I think he's got plenty of options which league he wants to move to. Champions League football at West Ham is certainly a tough offer to turn down. It's going to be just 20 million for us to finalize the Lafont deal. He's valued at 28 million. So this was some great business to close out our summer signings. So with that change made between the sticks, this is what our new starting 11 looks like. I think we're ready to take on the Champions League and apparently we're ready to take on Manchester United as well because we pick up a draw. As for the Champions League group stage, we got RB Leipzig, last year's winners, Lyon and Hajduk Splitz. Ben Rama just completing the move to RB Leipzig. A fun transfer with Jordan Morris making the move from the Seattle Sounders to Lyon. And finally, Puxtas is originally a player at Hajduk Split, but he's transferred away to Barcelona. So I thought I'd highlight that. Not too many fixtures to showcase in this first half of season two. But for the Premier League standings, we're three points clear at the top. And in our Champions League group, we've done just enough. A very close outing between us, RB Leipzig, and Lyon. That final victory against Lyon is the one that got us through to the knockout stages. No injury or morale concerns in our starting 11. And I think the choice to start Kudus at center forward at slash striker has paid off because both him and Bowen are sharing goals pretty equally. We'll keep pushing on, though, to the round of 16 of the Champions League against Atleti. They are typically a tough side in crew mode, and they've made their team even stronger with the transfer of Gonzalo Ramos, who's just joined PSG. But it was a 3-1 win in the first leg, at least two of those goals coming from Kudus, but an injury for Bowen, meaning that we'll need to shift things around. Obviously, we've got a plan B option, but it was really bad timing because we've got a Carabao Cup final against our rivals, Millwall. This is a competition that we weren't able to win last season, so it's important for me. The fact that we're playing against our rivals makes this more significant. I've decided to start Kudus at right wing, and we've given Balogun a chance at the striker spot as he's grown to an 81 rating. Obviously, we're favorites for this one, but you never know what might happen at Wembley when a cup final is about to go down. Changing tactics from the norm can always be a little bit risky, but Kudos has shown that he can thrive in a number of different spots. He did it at right wing last season. Hopefully he can do it as well in this Carabao Cup final. But it's Alvarez to set up for Nalls, who got the surprise start in this one due to a red card for James Ward-Prowse. But off of a set piece and corner kick, it's Paqueta who plays this over to Fornals. He will play one final pass to Aguirre and a finish from outside the box from our left-footed defender. Not exactly the set piece tactic I was expecting heading into this match, but we'll take every single goal as now Balogun plays through Kudus from this right side, nearly has that ball around the keeper as we push forward to the second half. Bolligan and Paquetza and really any of our front four were linking up throughout this 90 minutes. We're going to get a second goal from our Brazilian center attacking mid. And now Kudus plays it across once more to Paquetza. That's a brace and that is three goals for us on the day. Just an outstanding performance from the entire team, especially from Kudus. Despite not getting any goals, he had plenty of goal contribution via assists. And I felt like this was a good rebound from the FA Community Shield. We've got at least one trophy to our name before this season comes to an end. We've gotta be quick about shifting our focus from the Carabao Cup back to the Champions League. You can remember, we won our first leg, but we've still got to get a winning result in the second leg against Atleti. Fortunately, we had goals galore, winning the match 4-2 and 7-3 on aggregate. That puts us through to the quarterfinals against Juventus, but it was a undefeated month of March that picks us up the Manager of the Month award, at least for the Premier League, with four wins from four matches played. 
I found it very curious the transfers that Juve made as they've signed two Bayern players with Leon Goretzka and Serge Gnabry. Very close game in the first leg and a missed penalty from Balogun keeps the match level but we do pick up a 2-1 to result in the second leg to put us through to the semi-finals and a London derby against Spurs. I'm very surprised to see that Mo Salah has moved within the Premier League from Liverpool to Spurs, but once again, we've got very close Champions League fixtures, 2-2 in the first leg, which means everything to play for in the next 90 minutes. Bowen continuing his goal scoring and back from injury. There's no way that I won't be including him in the starting 11, so we'll go back to our original tactics at the start of the year. Any London Derby is going to be tense. I'm just glad that we can play this match at home at the London Stadium and not have to travel away and be in front of more Spurs fans. But getting into the 25th minute, we're going to see the first bit of action with Paqueta playing the ball across. Just a fantastic run into the box from none other then Jaden Sancho. He's just finding all sorts of space in this West Ham team, and I think he's got the creative freedom to drift from his original left wing spot, go a little bit more centrally or wherever space works in our front four. But it's a change from Spurs. They bring on Richarlison. And how about this for an instant impact from the ensuing corner kick? Richarlison and Spurs' new number nine will get the leveler on the day and also on aggregate. We'll look to make a change of our own. Balogun has scored on numerous occasions, so we'll swap Bowen out, move Kudos over to that right wing spot, and hopefully we can find the goal from our striker. Well, how about this for some link up? It's going to be Kudus finding Balogun, just the tactical change and managerial masterclass from Moyes that we were looking for. That goal ended up being the winner as we are through to a Champions League final in dramatic fashion. That Champions League final will be played against Borussia Dortmund, but we've got a couple of Premier League fixtures to finalize before that. This match against Wolves will be an important one because it can mathematically secure us the Premier League title with either a win or a draw or drop points from City. Bowen back into the starting 11 and was the focus of attention going into this one. But once again, it's a late sub from Balogun that scores us the winning goal as we will be lifting another trophy as soon as we return back home. Looking at Premier League results, we continued our winning ways so that when we return to the London Stadium, we can finally lift some more silverware. That's two on the season. We're just one shy of the treble with a Champions League final coming up. More surprises mid-table as Arsenal finished ninth, Newcastle in 10th. As for the relegation zone, Everton, Norwich, and Middlesbrough seeing the drop. We start the season with a loss in the FA Community Shield to Liverpool. City losing back-to-back -back FA Cup finals this year. It was against Everton. We defeated our rivals Millwall in the Carabao Cup. And the UEFA Super Cup went to Inter, last season's Europa League winners. City redeemed themselves with a victory in the Europa League against Marseille, and it's Azette to defeat Milan in the Conference League final. But all focus will now go on Borussia Dortmund, trying to close out May with another victory. And it's the return of a former West Ham player with Sebastian Allaire at Dortmund. But for goal output, Kudus once again will lead the way. He ranked as the second best goal scorer in the Premier League. Paqueta actually was equal with Ward Prowse for the most assists. Three of our players in the top seven, so some remarkable stuff there. And for clean sheets, our new signing, LaFont, leads the way with 14 from 38. Some good growth from Owen Hunter during his lone spell at Galatasaray, but with the final match of the season coming up, we have a retiring player with Michael Antonio. He's dropped four in his rating to a 71 overall, but I'll still stick him on the bench so that he can be part of the celebrations if we win this match. Just like our match last season against City, a lot more of the focus went towards Borussia Dortmund, and for good reason. For them to return to a Champions League final is a pretty remarkable sight, but we've had a few good seasons at West Ham and a quick rise to the top. Just some fantastic build-up play between our attackers, and if the Kudu signing does manage to go through, I think that's a lot of what we're going to see. Just a lot of creative players in their front four, and whenever that happens, you can see some magic on the pitch. It's Paqueta to step up for a free kick again. The set piece taker of choice in this West Ham squad over James Ward Prowse. He's staring down the keeper and the wall ahead of him, and really only one thing can happen from all that buildup, and that's a bit of brilliance from our number 10. He gets three bars of power, and he is going to beat Kobo on his near post. Just left way too much space 
uncovered. And within 12 minutes, we have got two goals past Borussia Dortmund. And we are starting this Champions League final on the right foot. We're into the second half and it's Ward Prowse who starts the build up. Paqueta over to Kudus. Can we make it three? Yes, we can. Continuing to get shots past Kobel on that near post of his. And this match pretty much seemed secured at this point, just 10 minutes left to play. And Sancho up against his former team is going to get involved in the goal scoring. A finesse shot effort on his right foot will make it four on the day. One of the best Champions League performances I've seen from a simulation from this West Ham squad. Just a well-rounded team with their original players and some exciting new transfers makes them one of the highest potential and upcoming teams to do a career mode with in the next season.